Check Podcasts. Hi, I'm Bruce Williams. I'm the CEO of the Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to Chamber Chats, happening as always here in the podcasting studios of the Czech Media Group, one of our chamber champions. I would like to also point out, as always, that I live and work in the unceded ancestral territory of the Lekwungen speaking nations known to us as Songhees and Esquimalt nations. Chamber Chats is made possible by the support of Island Savings, a division of First Quest Credit Union, who have a team of experts with solutions as unique as your business. We're going to talk to one of those experts in just a second. So we're still framing a lot of things in terms of the pandemic and what happened during COVID. And we saw this enormous shift over into working from home, people using platforms like Zoom, the one that we're on right now, Uh, financial matters, banking, insurance, correspondence, everything has shifted over to online. But with that has come the risks of cybersecurity. We want to talk about that today with, as we said, one of the island savings experts on that. Uh, Rachel Ginto is the VP, the vice president of cybersecurity and IT governance. Rachel, how are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me here, Bruce. So the fact that your job actually exists kind of points out where we're at with all this, right? It does. And it has uh, developed and grown over time. I think I would say the financial industry was one of the leaders in this space. And and it's because it's a trust business, right? Especially with everything being becoming digitized, even in banking. So we're going to talk about things in terms of security, but just the whole process of working and living online all the time has become more sophisticated, more advanced and if I may, more complicated, and a lot of us are having trouble keeping up. Is that fair to say? I think so. I think there's a bit of an adjustment and acceptance that everything has gone digital. You know, it's very uh, hard to think of anything that has uh, not gone digital these days, you know, core pieces of our lives, whether it's financial or if it's shopping or your education. Uh, Everything now has become uh, remote uh, options. So cybersecurity. Yes. What, it, what is that? In a nutshell, its focus is on protecting um, digitized environments, digitized data. Uh, a long time ago, we used to call it more information security. Um, you could argue that there is a slight difference where information security could cover things that aren't necessarily always digital. Uh, but if you think about um, anything protecting whether it's something that is facing a customer or whether something behind the scenes, the infrastructure that's running behind a company of any of any industry these days. So in your role with, uh, with First West and with Island Savings, you're, I, I guess you're, you're protecting the assets of the credit union, but at the same time, you are also protecting the assets of your members because it's their money that you're managing, right? Right. And if you if you think about what are the goals, uh, you know, it's in its most basic form, we're talking about protecting threats to confidentiality, integrity and availability. That's a common CIA triad that you might hear in cybersecurity. And, um, you know, there's there's a, a, a concept of uh, making sure the data is safe. Right. It's being used. Uh, correctly, it's accurate. There's not been unauthorized access to it or unauthorized tampering of it. And it's there when you need it for um, your your business goals or for whatever purpose it is personally. I guess when it comes to finances, dealing with Island Savings or another FI, financial institution, uh, theft is a real threat. That's what really terrifies people, I think, isn't it? A little bit. But, you know, in some ways, it's... Uh, the same story, but now digital, right? We've always had bank robbers, for example, they've just digitized themselves sometimes. But, um, you know, with that, there comes new responsibilities. We want all uh, things, you know, faster, sooner, better, anytime we feel like it, um, or when it's convenient for us. And that uh, is the opportunity with digital. Right. You don't have to. I remember when I was uh, a little kid and lining up at the bank with the pink slips or the blue slips. Right. But now you can bank 24 hours a day. Right. So that's the advantage. But with that comes our responsibility, uh, both um, as as a financial institution, but as also as a member yourself to um, make sure that you know what's going on with your finances and, and you say something if you if something looks odd. We, we really have to learn how to protect ourselves, don't we? We do. I think I, I would consider it shared responsibility, right? We have to do our part as a financial institution, but um, 
as a, a member or if you know if it's a different kind of business, a customer. You've also got to be aware with who you're transacting with, right? What is normal for you so that you know when um, something's going wrong, something looks uh, a little suspicious. Yeah, we we all have that urge probably to click on something that we shouldn't click on when we see it online. We're I, I, hopefully we're all getting better at that, but that's the problem, yeah. right? That's that's where you can enter into a realm of something over which you have no control. Right. Well, uh, there's a lot of psychology related to that. They create urgency. It's just like any other scam that we've seen before. Um, you know, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Uh, you know, if you think about things that you used to see on the back of comic books, right? It's these ads that, that tell you you'll be a genius or you'll be super strong. And if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. Um, but also at the same time, especially in, in uh, the business world, when you're expecting an email and it looks similar to what you were expecting, you might click, right? Uh, it's in the moment that that happens. Same with if you're at home. It looks like what you were expecting. You thought you were receiving a UPS package, but maybe it was actually a phishing email. Right. Phishing with a PH. I don't know where that term came from. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a funny term, but the, the concept of it is related to, you know, uh, reel and rod fishing where there's bait, something that attracts the person. Clickbait um, in this circumstance. <laughs> Yes, exactly. And so that they, they lure you, you know, s similar concepts. So to, to into tricking you to giving something away, either your password or something that they see of value. And um, all it means is that they've got to provide something attractive to you to get you to click when they need you to. One of the uh, one of the real keys to this whole thing in both accessing all of your data and what you're going to do and also your security is your passwords. I want to talk yes. about, yeah, I want to talk about that next. We're talking about cybersecurity today on Chamber Chats. Uh, Rachel Ginto is the VP of Vice President, Cybersecurity and IT Governance for Island Savings. So passwords, like how many passwords does the average person have to have? And the whole idea of keeping them a secret, like don't write them down, don't send them to other people. What's the role of a password in all of this and the security around that? Well, the password is like your secret key into, you know, your, you know, it's not that different from your, your home key getting into your house, except in this case, it should only be known by you, right? And the more complex you can make it, and a lot of times now, um, you know, whether it's your email or your banking or something else, it is quite uh, uh, complex because it makes it harder for the bad actor to guess, right? Um, and it's, it's the key to the doorway into whatever it is that uh, you're trying to protect, whether it's access to your email or something else. Yeah, it's good to keep birthdays, addresses, stuff like that out of your passwords, right? Because that's pretty easy for people right. to crack. There's one. There's a link on the Island Savings website that I was looking at that about the cybersecurity stuff. The, the mm -hmm. idea of getting a really good password involves being creative. But one of the ones they mentioned was take the first letter of each word in your favorite song. So yeah. they said, for example, if your favorite song is Donna Summer, she works hard for the money, then your password would be SWHFTM. But, you know, think what, what other tips do you have for people to try and create a really good, solid, uncrackable password? Well, thankfully, a lot of times now, um, wherever you're logging in, they'll uh, Im impose the rules on you so that you can make it complex. But a mix of capital letters and lowercase and numbers and length. You know, shorter is easier to crack, it's easier to guess, rather than a longer uh, one, which is where, you're, where you'll hear like passphrase as, a pass, as opposed to password. So mm. where that song comes in, it's multiple words, right? Um, and that's more like a passphrase. And so that makes it more difficult to guess. Yeah. And a lot of the guessing I'll add in there, for example, it's automated, so it's not somebody necessarily, you know, trying to type it in and guess it. They could be cycling through common words that people use. Well, that's almost like an AI thing, right? Where they, they identify language you commonly use and then they see if that applies to a password. Is that a fair assumption? Almost. Uh, it's a little bit less sophisticated than that, right? It, it's, uh, you know, applying common rules. English has uh, specific patterns, as does any other language, right? And then you could just apply those rules, um, you know, in an automatic way 
uh, and most common words. So uh, the other thing I think I would point out is um, uh, not using things that people can find. You know, it, a lot of us are on social media of some kind and inadvertently you might disclose some personal information that maybe you have used in a password. So ideally it's uh, related to something that no one would able, be able to find. Yeah. So beware anybody, a stranger who walks up to you and says, so what was your mother's maiden name anyway? <laughs> yeah. yeah you, don't, you don't want to go there with that stuff. <laughs> who, like, who, I want to go, who are these, these people or these bots or the, you know, there's this whole thing about, oh, it's some kid sitting in the parent's basement trying to hack people. But, it, but there's more to it than that, right? Like who, who are these individuals that we want to try and catch? I, I would say that they're different groups, different um, uh, actors. So the, the people that you think of in the basement – they still exist, but there's also others where it is a business, right? This is what they do with their time. It could be a nation state, you know, and that's a bigger kind of political type thing, um, activists. So, you know, it's a difference of individuals all the way to very organized groups. So by a nation state, you mean sort of an actual country, a small country. Right. That, yeah. So that's, that's yeah. industry for them. Right. Wow. Yeah. And then, and there's a lot of, um, in, in a lot of cases, uh, other than the activists, there's a lot of times it's financial motivation. You know, you can never say for sure, um, but that's a common one. Yeah. They're bank robbers. They're credit union robbers is what they're doing. So you've been in this for a while. You, you have seen this progress. You've seen this move along. You've seen it grow. Tell me about that, that process and progress of sophistication in this whole thing in cybersecurity. Actually, one thing that hasn't changed is the, we go back to the phishing, the part where you can, um, we call it social engineering, trick an individual into giving something away that that is of value, right? And that probably will persist um, till the end of time because it's just common in, in non-digital ways, right? Um, but with you know the the I guess if you're thinking about malware and things like that, what's also advanced is the protection against it, right? We're able to better protect ourselves, but it doesn't mean you can never let your you know leave let your guard down, right? The bank robbers never go home, so, you know they're always there. <laughs> yeah, theft of money is one thing. Theft of information, yeah. uh, even theft of our identity. Um, yeah. Something ransomware was a thing. Was that still around? The idea of that, if somebody wants to hold your information for ransom, you have to pay them to get your data back. Does that still happen much? It does still happen. Um, and it, it, in some ways, you can think of it as the impact of, you know, somebody has been able to get hold of your data and hold it hostage and, and then ask for a ransom payment. So it does, it's unfortunate, but it does sometimes happen. Uh, are you seeing anything right now that's sort of like the scam of the week or the scam of the month, something that suddenly popped up and is prevalent and people have to be aware of? Is there anything you're aware of right now? Well, um, I think I would say that it, uh, it it changes week to week. Sometimes it's quiet, but, you know, the most common you'll always see is that somebody got tricked into clicking a button or something like that. So give me an example of your team at Island Savings, for example, how you've helped someone out. Somebody, you know, call emails, calls, whatever, and says, oh, my God, I think I've been hacked. Something happened. There's something wrong. Something's missing, whatever it is. How, tell me how you manage that and give me an example if you can. Uh, well, one of the things that can be done, I mean, this is, this is where uh, if you're thinking about something that's member facing and helping to, to make sure that nothing has happened to their account. There are various um, alerts that you could turn on to make sure nothing is suspicious that's uh, happening with your account. So, you know, that's a, a benefit that also is within the control of the member. You know, behind the scenes is, is different. It's about the infrastructure and, and making sure the underlying um, controls are, are reliable. Um, but there's, as I spoke before, you know, there's a bit of shared responsibility too. And what I'd like to see um, us continue to do, we have a lot of good information on our websites to help people understand how to protect themselves. Uh, and it, it does uh, come up, come down to shared responsibility, both with us and with our member. There are some among us who are a bit more vulnerable to this sort of thing than others. And I want to talk about that next.
Cybersecurity is our topic today on Chamber Chats. Rachel Ginto is the Vice President of Cybersecurity and IT Governance for Island Savings. Um, we always hear things in the news, we hear about, read them, about seniors being duped because with all due respect, they don't have the sophistication very often to manage these things that come up as a threat to them, so, they, so they're much more at risk. So seniors and who else is at risk? Uh, really anyone can be at risk. And, and with the reason I say that is uh, sometimes the bad actors might be just be opportunistic. They catch you at the right time in the right moment or the right frame of thinking. Um, it's also important to protect kids, right? They're, they're eager to test and learn things and click buttons and um, it's, it's important to keep an eye on them. Uh, you know, I encourage, especially for young children to put in controls, parental controls, wherever you can. So I think that's another important part and, and to teach as well, right? To teach them to, to tell you when something looks funny, somebody's contacted you or something's happened to your screen that, or their screen that uh, looked odd or they didn't expect, that's important. So Chamber being the organization we are representing business, we know for a fact that there are smaller businesses who don't necessarily have the resource that it takes financially to put yeah. things in place to keep themselves safe. Big companies don't have that problem, smaller companies do. Yeah. What sort of advice could you give to those folks that are smaller operators? Well, for even the small operators, just like the big ones, uh, the basic hygiene, making sure you keep your devices up to date, whether it's your computers or your mobile phones, make sure that when there's a, a, you know, an update that comes in, uh, it doesn't matter if it's, it's Apple, an Apple device or if it's a Windows device, keep it up to date. And that'll go a long way. If you have, um, uh, anti-malware, if it's already included in, in what you've got, use that, right? Put all the basics in. Um, if you're gonna get help with a, um, a service provider of some kind, make sure that you ask the right questions. Same idea as you know, looking for a, any other contractor for service, make sure you've asked some questions and ask for um, proof that they know what they're doing. So we also have the circumstance where all of us have been working from home. And working from home, your home network may not have the sophisticated security elements that you would in your office space. So what kind right. of risk are people at working from home when they don't have that sort of support from their employer? Well, I, I'll point back to something that did happen when um, the remote work became uh, very prevalent in remote school. And you probably recall that there were instances where people were jumping or disrupting a Zoom call. Right. And mm -hmm. that's, again, people learn to use passwords. Right. Yep. <laughs> it's a simple technique that uh, goes a long way. Um, so having a password protected session is important. Uh, other things you can do, just like I said before, making sure you keep your own home devices up to date, your own personal phone. That's important. Make sure you've got a, a strong password on your um, Internet connection, your, your modem, your router, whatever you've got at home. And those things will, will go a long way. Uh, you actually mentioned cell phones, which, of course, we all spend half our lives on our phone. But mm -hmm. the, the risks to a phone are the same as they are to a home computer or a work computer, right? What sort of care do we have to have in mind when we use our phone, when we're working with data and working with financials and banking and confidential documents and that sort of thing? Uh, well, it's it's very, very similar. You know, it's really just the form factor in a lot of cases. Um, and uh, the phone has um, multiple things. And, and what is good too, is you can kind of use the two together, um, I think. You know, you've probably heard of multi-factor authentication, right? Sometimes your device can be used that way to help you um, put a, an extra step in there beyond just your password, which makes it a little bit harder, you know, that much harder for the, the uh, bad actor. Um, but the, the threats are very similar because it's often just the same kind of um, application on your phone as it is on uh, a regular computer. I have a bit of a thing about Wi-Fi. Uh, I don't know yeah. why I don't always trust it. I, I have some, when you're on an open Wi-Fi or open data or something instead of a dedicated Wi-Fi system. How much of yeah. a risk is that to us? Because I I feel pretty leery about that sometimes, quite honestly. Well, that's um, I would call that you know your spidey senses are a little bit heightened to things like that, um, it, and I would say that in 
maybe public places is where you probably should be a little bit more careful. Um, if you don't, if you do need to open, uh, sorry, use a public Wi-Fi, then then avoid you doing anything um, sensitive on it. Maybe don't do your banking on that, for example, or don't do um, your taxes or something like that, yeah. where there's information that that you want to keep safe. Um, you know, if you want to look up something quickly on Google or looking for uh, the nearest cafe, sure, something like that's not too risky. But think about the risk related to what you're doing. The phrase that, that always gets me when it comes to that is, at any given time, someone could be watching you and you would never know. That's kind of scary, isn't it? It is scary. Um, and that's that's why uh, it's that, uh, you know, that balance between convenience and the risk you're willing to take, right? Sometimes you do need that convenience in that moment to just look something up quickly on your phone or your computer. But other times you wanna make sure that if you're doing something more sensitive, um, even, even shopping, uh, I would put more in a more sensitive category if you're gonna have to enter a credit card or something like that, right? Try to avoid um, an open public Wi-Fi. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned earlier about the things, the updates that pop up. Like in a big picture, how often should we be upgrading or updating our software? Well, it, it's when it comes. Like if, yeah. if, if you see a message and first be sure that it's the message from your, you know, your actual computer, not, not a fake one, um, that you should update as soon as possible. Because when they release it, it generally means that you should update it right there and then. Okay, we have to wrap this up. Give me just if you got any really quick sort of tips that everybody needs to keep in mind at all times, front of mind, whether it's something you've already said or something we haven't yet mentioned, what do we always need to be aware of and what kind of tips can you offer to keep us safe? Uh, one tip I would give is you don't use the same password for everything, right? Because that means you're, you're, you've got one thing to lose and potentially that opens the door to everything you've got. So uh, please have multiple passwords. If you're not sure about something, um, ask somebody that can be trusted. Ask a trusted source. If you're, if it's financial, please see your your bank or your credit union. Right. Ask somebody that you can trust, and and trust your instincts. If something sounds to be too good to be true, you're probably right. Yep. It's like me with Wi-Fi. It's exactly the same thing. <laughs> Uh, this is good advice, and of course, we would suggest that uh, if you want to check out the Island Savings website or whoever the financial institution is that you deal with, they have professionals who can help you out with this. Uh, Rachel Ginto is the Vice President of Cybersecurity and IT Governance for Island Savings. Rachel, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Bruce. Great to be here. And I'm Bruce Williams. I'll see you again for another Chamber Chat. 